Crude oil is considered to be sour if its total sulfur level is above 0.5% and sweet if below this figure. Sour gas must also contain sulfur, often in the form of hydrogen sulfide, and by definition, levels of greater than 4 parts per million are required to warrant such a classification. However, in both oil and gas, hydrogen sulfide may be present in conjunction with significant moisture, and this combination, either alone or exacerbated by the presence of carbon dioxide, can produce severely corrosive environments which can rapidly attack line pipe steels in very distinctive and dramatic ways. These acidic gas mixtures present major challenges for material scientists and pipeline designers. This is a complex subject, but it has been clear for many years that higher levels of the element manganese, which is beneficial to steel strength, can, because of the way in which it segregates during continuous casting, end up being specifically detrimental to the ability of a steel to resist sour surface attack. Historically, carbon and manganese are the building block elements from which ferritic line pipe steel strength is derived. Whilst the quest for improved weldability has progressively driven carbon to much lower levels, in recent decades, to conceive of an alloying strategy with dramatically reduced manganese levels would generally be considered to be an impractical proposition. However, resurrecting an idea which he developed, nurtured and patented decades ago, Dr. Malcolm Gray of the Microalloyed Steel Institute, based in Houston, Texas, surprised attendees at a 2012 CBMM Sour Gas Seminar in Sao Paulo with his original and lateral thinking by proposing much lower manganese steels for sour gas service. In essence, Dr. Gray's impeccable logic suggested to him that if manganese is the problem, take it out and replace it with alternative strengthening elements. Since niobium is the key microalloying element which features in the overwhelming majority of progressive metallurgical designs for thermomechanically rolled high-strength line pipe steels, it is perhaps not surprising that Dr. Gray opted to utilize this element's powerful effect on steel transformation in conjunction with chromium as a replacement for manganese. The reduction in manganese below 0.5% reduces continuous casting segregation dramatically. Dr. Gray's 2012 presentation was sufficiently authoritative and convincing to persuade CBMM to sponsor and coordinate a remarkable international project to evaluate the commercial potential of the new alloy development. More importantly, key steelmakers and pipe manufacturers were also persuaded, and some 2,000 tonnes of steel were produced in Mexico, China and Germany and subsequently processed in 11 countries and 27 different steel processing and pipe manufacturers, a truly remarkable international collaborative project. Some aspects of the project are ongoing in certain countries, but enough data had already been gathered by the autumn of 2014 to merit an opportunity for all participants to share their results and experiences from this worldwide trial. Initial results have been impressive, with strength and toughness levels exceeding the expected API 5L X65 range, along with enhanced immunity to severe sour service. The technology is openly available and everyone has the opportunity to benefit from its application. We can confidently look forward to seeing Dr. Gray's vision bearing commercial fruit to the advantage of both the supply chain and end users.